scarcity of water. Now, what importance or effect does drainage have? First, it helps in reclaiming waterlogged soil for crop production. Soil that is waterlogged will not do your plants any good. In fact, it will corrupt the seed. It will not allow it to germinate. So, drainage helps to reclaim waterlogged soil for crop production. Second, it improves the soil structure, thereby improving the water holding capacity of the soil. Then it improves aeration for good respiration. When there is excess water in the soil, then there is no hair. Life in the soil is very difficult. Oxygen is difficult to penetrate into. So when you drain your soil of excess water, then aeration is improved for good respiration of organisms in the soil. Then it gives suitable conditions for growth of soil microbes. I just said that when there is aeration, then there will be good respiration for the soil microbes to grow and they will be able to perform their activities in fullness. Then it enhances harvesting of crops, especially swamp rice. Also, it reduces soil acidity and salinity. It also increases crop production and crop temperature. Last but not the least, it enhances early planting of crops. We have two types of drainage system. First is the surface drainage, then we have the subsurface drainage. The surface drainage involves orderly removal of excess water artificially from the surface of the land using constructed open ditches, field drains, and land grazing. The open ditches ensure easy evacuation of excess water from the farmland. So when you have the dish, then the water can easily go in there rather than stay on your farmland. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this surface irrigation? The advantage is first, one, it is relatively easy to construct, then it is cheaper than the sub surface drainage system, which I will be talking about later. Then the disadvantages of this method, first, it occupies good land space that could have been used for planting. You know, when you dig ditch, on the land, you can't plant anything on that particular area where there is deep, so it occupies the land where you can use for something better. Then, two, it hinders the passage of farm machines. Your farm machines just go there, then that just then you just destroy it by entering into the ditch. Then they are prone to gully erosion. Such kind of such method we lead might lead to gully erosion. Then it requires frequent maintenance. Another disadvantage is that it increases the cost of crop production. When you had, after you have applied fertilizer, man, power, implement everything you are using, you are still adding money to construct open ditch. You know, that is accumulating the cost. So it increases the cost of production. Next, it is established, it is expensive to establish. Then the farm is more prone to hazard when with this method. For instance, somebody can just unknowingly, maybe a first time out to your farm, or you're just running around or whatever, accidentally fall into the ditch. So that is an hazard on the farm. So it is prone to have a hazard. And the second type of drainage system is what is called the sub drainage or the underground drainage system. This is the orderly removal of excess water from the land using towels or moves or perforated pipes dug under the ground. So this is not an open ditch or field. This is the use of perforated pipes that is under the ground. They collect, the pipes collect water and channel it away from the farmland. Just like the water corporation gets their pipe around to, to distribute water to various communities through those pipes, also, you can just drain away water from your farmland using perforated pipes. Now, the advantages and disadvantages of the subsurface drainage. The advantages first. Advantages. It does not pose any threat to any machine. Why? It is under the soil. So, it does not affect anybody. It does not disturb farm machine. It does not disturb your activities. Then two, high value crops have grown. The next is that the, it leaves the field free of surface obstruction. There is no obstruction because it's under the ground. 
if you, you don't if you, if you don't even tell anybody, they won't know there is such thing there because under the soil, then more land is available for cultivation. Unlike when you dig a ditch that you cannot even use that place, then the cost of maintenance is low. Soil is hard in place so that it will not damage pipes. Then the last advantage is that drainage is faster with this method and it is more efficient. Now, the disadvantages of subsurface drainage system. Number one is that it is very expensive to operate. It, it, costs, it will cost you more money than you doing the surface drainage system. Because you have to run pipes and it is underground, so it is more work. Then it is not easily constructed. It requires technicality. Then it is difficult to maintain. It is difficult to maintain. Since it is under the ground, you may not know on time when there is a fault that you have to correct before it leads to a bigger issue. Then the last advantage is that it needs very deep evacuation of soil. So we've seen the two types of drainage system, the surface and the subsurface drainage system, and we've considered the advantages and the disadvantages. Now we move on to talk about agricultural pollution. Agricultural pollution is the release, the release of toxic substances into the environment by natural forces or man or other animals to an extent that causes biological damage to man and its resources. That is what agricultural pollution is, just like the normal pollution. The release of toxic substances into the environment by natural forces or even man himself and other animals to an extent that it causes biological damage to man and to his resources. Then pollutants are harmful substances that causes pollution. So the things that cause pollution are the ones that we call pollutants. And we have just four causes or types of pollution. We have hair pollution, noise pollution, land pollution, and water pollution. Hair pollution is the first that I'll be discussing. Now I've put it in the table so for easy assimilation. The pollutants, the sources, the effects, and the control. The pollutants, a major pollutant of hair pollution is ammonia gas. Then sources of ammonia gas in nature is the composition from animal, you know. We've talked about manuring. When you put you have animal dung in the soil, it will decompose over time and it will emit ammonia. We talked about it also in nitrogen cycle. So the source of ammonia gas is animal decomposition. When the dung of animal has decomposed, then it will emit ammonia gas. Then what effect does it have on agriculture? First, it impairs the health. For instance, irritation of eyes irritation of the lungs, cough, and other respiratory tract diseases to man and even his animals. Then how do we control this? First is that animal dung should be evacuated from the farm. Don't just leave animal dung all over the place. It will cause hair pollution. Then number two is that odor killants or chemicals can be introduced into the animal feed so that it will reduce drastically the odor of animal dung. When odor killants or chemicals is added to their, it's not harmful to the animal, it's added to the feed of the animal. It helps to suppress the odor of the dung that the animal will release. So that's a way to control or minimize the air pollution caused by ammonia gas. gas. Then the next pollutant of hair pollution is dust particles. And the major source of dust particles in agriculture or on the farmland is feed meal. The feed meal, where the meal is produced for um, the feed of animals, the place where it is processed, where it is grinded and all that, that is what is called the feed meal. Then what effect does dust particles have on man and his animal? First, it damages the lungs and causes discomfort to the animal and probably to man too. Then it irritates the respiratory system and causes cut and cough 
to workers. How do we control dust particles? Feed me workers have to protect themselves by wearing protective covering over their nose when they are milling feeds. So, you just go to the meat and um, feed meal with your nose uncovered. The dust particles that are released will cause you irritation. So, to prevent that, you have to cover your nose. Now, we move on to talk about noise pollution. Pollutants now is noise, and the source is also feed meal. You know, when there is milling of feed, grinding of meat, there will be the machines make noise. So, and that causes noise pollution. What effect does noise has on the farmer and his animal? First, it causes loss of hearing or deafness. When you are so used to noise, then you may not be able to hear when there is a soft sound. So it has destroyed the hair drum. Then the next is that it causes emotional disorder, anxiety, or lack of concentration. It also causes high blood pressure or hypertension. Then it causes changes in behavior. How do we control noise from the feed meal? One, poultry farmers should poultry farms should be located far away from residential quarters because of that noise. Health is to be disturbing people at the quarters. Then the next one is that there should be installation of soundproof in the feed me building so that we absorb the noise that is being generated by the feed meal the next type of pollution is the land pollution and the first pollutant is refuse sources of refuse refuse is dry waste the dry waste that we generate is called refuse and sources of refuse are from farm offices and farm sites workers come they hurt the skids, they hurt that, they brought paper to write, they, they, they did their various activities, so they will generate refuse. Now, what effect does refuse have? First, it causes offensive odor when they decay. When the refuse decay, even when they are dry waste, but when they decay, it causes offensive odor, then it can also cause respiratory disorder. How should we control refuse to avoid land pollution. Refuse should be burnt in incinerators. Then